Good morning, everyone. It's Thursday morning, uh, 18 June 2020. It's my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, Anna. Um, very grateful for those who participate with us, for Moose and, and others who join in by watching on video. Uh, this morning's morning prayer, we're going to read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18 through 25, just picking up where we left off. 1 Peter 2, 18 through 25. Uh, we have a couple prayer requests and then some some of our regular prayers, and um, so let's do that. So 1 Peter 2, 18 through 25. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing, when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. What credit is it if, when you sin, you are beaten for it, you endure but if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten but continued entrusting himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your soul. All right, that was 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. So let's pray. Lord God, we um, pray that you would help us to follow that example of our Lord Jesus Christ, who um, that he um, suffered for us, leaving us an example, that we'd follow his steps, that um, there would be no deceit found in our mouths, that if we're viled, we would not revile in return, when we suffer, we would not threaten, but would continue to entrust ourselves with our Lord and Savior to him who judges justly. We thank you that our Lord bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, that he, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that the great shepherd and overseer of our souls has restored us, returned us mm. to the fold. Lord, thank you so much. Father, we pray for the leaders of our Oklahoma City Police Department uh, who have been approved their budget we ask you uh, that you would guide them and lead them in ways that, that um, they would be worthy of the budget they've received we pray for our police officers that they would glorify you and in, in what they do and how they do it um, we ask you lord for their help for help for them father pray for daniel and emily and their kids and ask you to sustain them and give them uh, strength we pray for their finances and for their marriage and for their vocation and studies and all those things, Lord, we pray that you would bless them. Uh, we pray for John, Robert, and Mary and the kids, that you would watch over them as well as he is studying in seminary and keep him and keep them, provide for all their needs, Lord God, and um, may their family be healthy and steady and strong and sturdy. Father, uh, I pray for the growth of the kingdom, that churches in every nation, every denomination that loves you and preaches the Bible would continue to grow. But Lord, I especially pray for heritage, what I've been praying and I'm going to keep praying. Would you grow heritage? Would you give us the privilege and the encouragement of seeing 12 believers' baptisms, new people, uh, that have grown up not knowing you, coming to know you? Would you bring new families uh, just for the health and, and continued growth of heritage? May many other churches get to see those sorts of blessings too, especially as people wrestle with uh, reconciliation, wrestle with uh, viruses and what's the meaning of life and how do I deal with all these things? Show them your real true presence and give them the real actual hope of the resurrection and the final healing to come 
and all things will be made right. Lord, I also pray for Phil. Uh, we thank you for his many faithful years here at Heritage and ask that he would have uh, many more. Uh, also, sort of coming back to the police, uh, would you keep them safe and give them wisdom to make safe decisions for themselves and others? Uh, we are glad that we have people willing to serve. We ask that you would continue to lead them in uh, righteous ways, and where there are those that are not righteous, you would let justice roll down. And as we get ready for Father's Day, Lord, some of us have been terribly hurt by our fathers, and some of us have been wonderfully encouraged by our fathers. I thank you for all good fathers and the way they show us your goodness. And for those who had bad, who have father wounds, would you show them your fatherliness, that they would actually begin to heal Maybe they would, as they consider their own bad fathers, they would actually find healing for their whole selves as they discover you as their father. Uh, give us a good Father's Day, Lord. Lord, just thinking about this Father's Day and those who have recently lost their fathers and of two families that in just the last two weeks their dads have passed away and there are others. This will be a hard Father's Day for them. I pray that you would be a comfort to those families and um, help them to, as they go through this Father's Day, give them peace, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, we'll pick up again tomorrow, um, right where we left off. Um, and so until then, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.